rich. Les Schwab Tires is known for, obviously, its tires and the quality tires, the service that goes with it. Now you have a couple examples here. One is shinier, this has a lot of little lines through it, seems to be deeper. What's the difference between these two tires? Well, that's a great question. Uh, this tire here is just simply an all-season uh, tread design. This would be something that you would purchase for your car for all year round. So it's going to get adequate uh, uh, wet weather traction. Uh, but during the winter months, and severe weather especially, I brought this tire as an example of a snow or, or ice traction tire. So it looks like it's a lot deeper in the... It certainly is. As you can sell, tell in the all-season tire, the all-season tire is designed with multi-channels and a diagonal tread design so it can siphon water and whatnot out of the tread face quickly. But the advantage to the snow tire is going to be is that it, you're right, it does have a deeper uh, tread. It, of course, uh, has uh, more of these little lines that you mentioned. Mm -hmm. uh, that is called siping. And siping? Siping. Mm -hmm. And what that siping does is that under, uh, under power or under braking, uh, the tread shifts. And so each one of those sipes creates a biting edge on the road surface. So it can either allow you to accelerate uh, quicker and without slippage or, of course, brake quicker. So it's, it's uh, significantly more advanced than just your standard all-season tire. However, of course, to every situation, there are some disadvantages. Uh, the all-season tire, the disadvantage is it's going to get minimal traction in severe weather, um, where the snow tire is really designed for that. But the disadvantage to the snow tire, of course, is, is that it's going to be a seasonal type product, something that you would want to only have installed during the severe winter months. And that is partly because of mileage, partly, I'm going to guess this is a very expensive Right. Well, <laughs> tires are definitely a big investment, no doubt. Um, but the snow tires are developed with a very pliable rubber compound, and the, it's designed to stay pliable in the extreme cold. Uh, so because of that, of course, the tires are going to be prone to wear more quickly and probably perform ah. poorly in the summer and hotter months. So they actually will wear more quickly than an all-season tire. Yes. Absolutely. So when people do decide to stay on the safe side and have, let's say, an all-season tire as well as they want the winter snow tires, do you recommend that they have these on rims and just keep them on the rim instead of having to change them? What, what's your recommendation? For well, folks? there's some certain advantages to having your snow tires mounted on extra wheels. Um, wheels, not rims. All right. Yes, that's wheels. okay. okay. The, the first advantage would be just simply the ease of installation. Uh, you could put them on in an emergency. If you had to, you could even put them on at your own home if you absolutely mm. had to, where you're not going to be able to do that if they're not on extra wheels. Uh, secondly, uh, anytime you dismount and mount a tire, of course, there's wear on the beads and the construction of the tire. It's hard on a tire to continually dismount and mount it. Uh, thirdly, a lot of uh, folks like us, we do not actually charge to install your tires if they're mounted on extra wheels. So then, of course, you save the installation cost as well. But primarily just the ease of having them mounted and ready to go uh, in the event of that storm that maybe mm -hmm. we just weren't prepared for. Well, now, I'm real curious on this thing in the middle. <laughs> it looks kind of like, I don't know, a crab trap or a... Um, an Indian, the weave, the dream weaver, <laughs> only made with chains. It does look a bit complicated. All right, what are we going to catch with this, and what is it? <laughs> yeah, it does look a bit complicated, doesn't it? Well, this is, this is a good example of today's uh, snow tire chain uh, that can be used for emergency purposes as a traction device. Although they look complicated, uh, these are actually designed to be quite easy to install. And the reason they are is because the chain actually uh, uh, comes apart in three different places. And so you can simply whip that behind your tire on your car and kind of shimmy it up the backside and hook it right here in the front. Oh, do that again. Yeah, well, it just comes apart like this. Okay. And you just... Uh, and put this on the back side of the tire. Put it around the back side of the tire. And then this, of course, is on the front side. And you just simply hook it up front. And then, uh, and then there's two other places you would hook this as well. So now we have it on the tire, and I have all these funny little <laughs> things that must connect somehow, right? <laughs> they do. And uh, th what I'd like to mention about chains is in order to uh, be successful at installing these is do them in your driveway uh, before you're on the side <laughs> of the road in a snowstorm. 
uh, wanting to figure out how to install the chains. But they're actually designed to be quite easy to install. All right, now show me. So um, basically, if you were to uh, if you were to be in front of the vehicle, uh -huh. you could put this. So pretend you're on that side. Yeah. We're gonna do that. We're gonna pretend okay. here, and we're gonna put it around the back side of the tire, and we're gonna bring it up and hook this chain right here. Okay. Uh huh. And then of course you can hook this part right here because it's hanging right in front of you at this point. Once you get it over the tire, it makes much more sense. And then just simply slide that mm -hmm. over the tire like so. And then this portion here, of course you want to start out by having this un untangled, just simply wraps around the bottom where the vehicle is sitting mm -hmm. and, it, and it hooks up. We can't do it with the tire sure. on the stand. But there you have it. It's That's as simple it? as, and quickly as that. Oh my gosh. Now, of course, these are just emergency devices, so you wouldn't want to oh. travel more than 25 to 35 mi 30 miles an hour with these on. So you, you need to go very slowly. This is, uh, this is uh, what's called an S-class type of chain, which means that it is designed for limited clearance situations. Of course, um, with today's vehicles, there's only so much room to put a chain. Vehicles are designed nowadays for performance and handling and, 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 and fantastic suspension systems. But those suspension systems get in the way of a lot of chains being installed, so traction the devices. old so style chains may not work on the new vehicles? On newer vehicles, you're going to most likely have to go with an S-class or a low clearance style chain. Mm -hmm. The best way to know that is, first of all, check your owner's manual. Uh, that's a very important piece because in your owner's manual, you're not only going to understand if your vehicle will allow you to put chains on it, but what type of chain if you can, and then where to put them. In the event that you have a two-wheel drive vehicle, it'll tell you which end of the vehicle to install them on. Good point. If you have a four-wheel drive or an all-wheel drive vehicle. Also, if, if the manufacturer says that you can install just two chains, it'll tell you which end is best to put them on. Or some manufacturers say that you need to install four chains on an all-wheel drive vehicle. Really? Because you've got all four wheels engaged. Correct. And also that chain, the surface of that chain, uh, increases the diameter, the overall diameter, rolling diameter of the tire. Uh -huh. And so your onboard uh, uh, functions such as your uh, tire pressure monitoring systems, your stability uh, systems in the vehicle. Uh, a lot of vehicles come with traction control. Uh, a lot of those systems run off of tire diameter, so your computer in your car will get confused if one tire is larger than the other, which of course is, increases diameter. Well, once again, it's very clear to me, one had better not only read their owner's manual, but check with the experts. Thank you. Thank you.